All right, hey, how's it going, everybody? In this video, we're gonna talk about exporting in FL Studio. You know, what are like the best settings as well as what's the difference between like Wave and MP3 and all that kind of stuff. So I've written an article on the ultimate guide to exporting in FL Studio. You guys can click any of these to navigate you know, to a certain area that interests you. Don't forget about my membership on my website. It's only $10 a month and you guys get unlimited access to the courses I've created over the years. Currently there's 13 courses. So let's get into the video. I always like to use shortcuts in FL Studio. It's the fastest way to do stuff, okay? So if we go to file and you go to export, you can see that, you know, control R is for a wave and shift control R is for MP3. So if I go control R, you know, it's gonna pop up a window saying, you know, where do you wanna save? So I'll just cover these quickly though, okay? So Wave is your high quality. This is what you're gonna be using to upload to something like DistroKid if you wanna get your music on like Spotify, iTunes, all that kind of stuff. And MP3 would be if you wanna kind of share it like through email to a friend or something, kind of more of like a rough mix. If you want more information on these file formats, you guys can read the article, okay? So we're just gonna go Control R, which is Wave file. Okay, and I'm just gonna save it just like my desktop here. Okay, so this is what the actual export setting looks like, okay? So you have the option to export the full song. Uh, you can also go pattern, and that would just be like the, the actual pattern you're on at that moment. Um, the tail, so with FL Studio, an awesome way to learn is literally hitting F1. So as you can see here, I just hit F1 in the window there and it's gonna break down everything for you. So for everyday use, I would leave this on leave remainder. The other two options are more for like if you're sound designing loops and stuff like that. Next, you have your option for do on wave, which is like high quality, do on MP3, which is a compressed version. And you can actually export multiple versions of that track, which is really, really cool. So in this case, we're just gonna keep it on wave. Now it's up to you. You can select 24 bit or 16 bit. I personally go 16 bit. 44.1 kilohertz. And so that 44.1 kilohertz is what's called your sample rate. And I'll show you about that in a second. It's actually, you set that in your settings. So now down here in the quality, you wanna set this at 512. It's gonna take a little bit longer to render, but it'll give you higher quality results. Again, it explains that in the F1 settings. I have high quality checked off for all plugins. For my readings, it seems like this is more geared towards native FL Studio plugins. However, it also said some third-party plugins may benefit from this too. I also select disable maximum polyphony. This is just to do with the amount of notes that can play at once. And we want all the notes to be able to play like when you've actually played them. Uh, dither, so this is always a tricky topic. I'm not gonna get too in depth in it because it's really like a whole article on its own. But what happens is when you change the bit depth, so FL Studio is in 32 bit floating point, okay? And when you change the bit depth to 24 bit or 16 bit, you're gonna to wanna to dither, okay? Now, depending on if you have a limiter that allows you to dither, you know, so you don't wanna dither twice. So let's say you don't have a limiter that allows you to dither you would just like dither here, okay? So now when you export it to Wave, you've dithered, now you can upload it, it's good to go. And what dithering is, it's just at like the very, very bottom of your audio, like the very, very quietest levels is to do with quantization error. That's all I'll say on it. So in simple terms, when you are exporting to a different bit depth, you're gonna to wanna to dither, okay? As simple as that. Down here in the miscellaneous section, I just leave these three checked off, so trim, PDC silence. I'm reading the manual. This is a little bit confusing, but it's to do with plugin delay compensation. That's what PDC stands for. And it calculates the, the delay and stuff like that. So I just leave that enabled. It actually comes default like that. And again, you guys can read that in the help manual. The next two sections are super easy to understand. So first of all, you know, if you've mixed your song with effects and everything like that, well, obviously you want them on. And if you've mastered the song with like EQ, compression, all that kind of stuff, well, you're going to want those effects on too. And then it's just a matter of Done. You can export and you're good to go. And now you'd use that high quality WAV file to upload again to like SoundCloud, DistroKid, all that kind of stuff. Uh, for the MP3, um, I typically would not go lower than 256 or you can put it to 320, okay? So that, that's probably where I'd go. And if you're gonna work on anything other than that, then I would just go WAVE. Now to talk about OGG and uh, a FLAC file. So these are kind of more newer types of files. Wave and MP3 have been like the standard for a long time. Uh, over the years, MP3 had like patents on it and stuff like that. From my readings on Wikipedia, it seems like the patents are now gone. And so that's where OGG kind of came in. It was more of an open source format, which means that, you know, there's no patents, there's no copyright, you know, so anyone who wants to use this OGG file format is not restricted to these rules, right? Another difference I learned through my readings, uh, from writing up this article is MP3 exports in a constant bitrate. So what that means is that if you take a file 
um, the, like a song here and you make it like three, three minutes long, it doesn't matter how much information is in that song. It's always going to be the same file size, but OGG is variable. So what that means is that even if there's not much content, then it's going to actually reduce the file size, which is kind of cool. And so the main difference between a wave and an FLAC compared to an MP3 and OGG, these are what you call lossless. And what that means is that it's not actually removing any information from the actual data file, okay? So when we listen to an MP3, what's happening is in order to reduce the file size, it's actually taking out frequencies from the song, but through scientific research, they're just removing certain frequencies which our ears are not that sensitive to. And so by removing these non-sensitive frequencies, it allows them to remove them and make the file size smaller. However, that's what you call lossy and it's actually damaging, you know, your audio because it's removing the fidelity of it. So if you choose WAVE, this is a lossless file format. However, the file size can be like 40 to 50 megabytes. Now, FLAC is actually a compressed lossless file. So what that means is that it still has the fidelity. However, the file is actually just compressed and the file size is smaller, but you still get the high fidelity. Now, like I'm saying, so FLAC and OGG, they're kind of newer in compared to MP3 and WAVE. So they may not um, work as well on certain audio players, but over the years, you know, these have become way more popular that was more kind of in the beginning years, but that's just something to be said about them. But for myself, if I was going to export my audio to put it up to like DistroKid, you know, to make it on Spotify, iTunes, all that kind of stuff, I personally just go Wave 16-bit, you know, that's high high quality CD standard quality. So 16-bit, 44.1, and I'm good to go. If you hit F10 and you go to audio, you're going to see the sample right here. So this is where I was saying 16-bit, 44.1 kilohertz. That's it right here. If you want to adjust it to the 48k then you can adjust it right there um, again fl studio will ask you to restart okay and that's it so that's how i export my audio again i use the shortcuts it would just be control r and then now i can save it somewhere let's just say again my, my desktop now i'll also say one more thing so the thing with audio is like it's super simple and compared to like let's say exporting video like video there's a lot of stuff to know when it comes to exporting high quality video with audio, we actually have it pretty simple. It's just a matter of, do you want high quality wave or do you want just like an MP3? And that's it, okay? So hopefully that helps. If you guys have questions, leave your comments below and I'll get back to you.